Texas wide receiver Adonai Mitchell is the next George Pickens. But is that a good thing? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuk. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $200 if your bet wins. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to get started. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. You can also read her at Pro Football Focus and Behind the Steel Curtain. And on today's show, we are discussing Adnai Mitchell, wide receiver from Texas. Again, another really interesting receiver that I can't quite figure out. Kate, what did you see when you put on the tape? There's a lot to like about A.D. Mitchell. And as somebody who roots for the Texas Longhorns, had a lot of fun watching A.D. Mitchell all year round because he is the ultimate. And I'm actually going to say this is probably a theme of this draft class is the size, speed, movement skills mismatch. Mm -hmm. Like It just feels like this entire draft class is filled with outstanding and big athletes. And he absolutely showcased that at the NFL combine. I want to share two graphics. If you're watching along with us on YouTube here, the first is his spider chart, which I'd love me a good spider chart courtesy of mock draftable uh, came in at the 74th percentile for height, 59th percentile for weight ran a four, three, four, 40 yard dash. I know everybody's uh, probably a little hung up on uh, his teammate uh, who just happened to break the, 40 yard dash record at the NFL combine, but AD Mitchell, four, three, four second, 40 yard dash at 205 pounds and six, two and a quarter inches like that. That's uh, absurd. Uh, you know, 89th percentile for his vertical jump, 98th percentile broad jump. Like he is a pristine athlete and it does translate for size. You look at the second graphic, which I'm now sharing his relative athletic score. He is a 9.99 RAS that ranks fifth out of 3,188 wide receivers dating back to 1987 credit to the inventor of the, the RAS score Kentley Platt mm -hmm. at math bomb. So please check out his work. He does a lot of fantastic stuff. And, you know, I don't think there's really anything to showcase the type of athlete that AD Mitchell is uh, other than the RAS score. But Marcus, the biggest issue people have with this guy, despite his movement skills, despite the obvious, you know, athleticism is the fact that really prior to 2023 didn't have a ton of production spent his first two seasons with Georgia before transferring to Texas in 2023 posted 55 receptions, 845 receiving yards, 11 touchdowns. And, you know, I, I think there are a lot of questions, obviously Xavier worthy was more of the focal point of this offense, but didn't have production until that third season. And it, it wasn't overly dominant production. So like, the production profile, a lot of question marks here in general. Yeah, production is one of my biggest issues. Um, let, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way before we talk about the positives here. One of the things that I'm struggling with is when you are this big, this talented, and this athletic, how can you not be a factor in almost every game? Like I get having the occasional bad game or whatever, but Caden, in his last 20 games, so this is his last two years, He's been held under 47 yards in 13 of his last 20 games. I mean, you're talking about like 65% of the time, you're basically a non-factor. He has three games in his career of over 90 yards. And uh, listen, I, I hear all the arguments. Well, he's playing with Quinn Ewers. Uh, again, a lot of people think Quinn Ewers is going to be like our first round pick next year. I don't necessarily see it. Most wide receiver prospects, not just – in this class, but most receiver prospects play with really bad quarterbacks. Like for example, 
Can you name who uh, Zay Flowers' quarterback was last year when he played for Boston College? How about Rashi Rice's quarterback at SMU? How about Tank Dells at Houston? But all those guys were able to put up huge numbers. 800 yards in 14 games when you're as talented as A.D. Mitchell and you're playing in the Big 12 is a little disappointing. Yeah, I, I think that's all very fair points. Three games of 30 or fewer receiving yards this season. That is as many games as he had with 80 plus receiving yards this season. So like for all of the, the you know, potential and, and big time hype, like the seal or the floor is quite low. And I don't know that necessarily that the ceiling is high, high enough. I do worry with A.D. Mitchell that we're going to get a little bit enamored by the athlete and potential, you know, development of an athlete. But Marcus, before we like totally hammer on this kid, I know, for the I know, I feel terrible. Can we can we do some strength stuff here because well, he is a really good prospect. <laughs> well, before we do that, I do want to just give a little bit of credence, a little bit of insight because I this isn't something that uh, if you're looking at the box score that you're going to be uh, privy to unless you're looking into the actual background. So. We mentioned the the first two years that he spent at Georgia. His second season, 134 receiving yards, three touchdowns, and six total games. He suffered a high ankle sprain in week two of his sophomore season. He missed most of the year. Came back at the end of the year for like the postseason. So, like again, coming back from you know a pretty significant ankle injury, there you have to imagine even upon his return, not necessarily a hundred percent. I'm kind of writing off his sophomore season and that's me. I, I don't think everybody's writing off that year fully, but I do think it's really hard to judge somebody that, you know, the, the injury kind of derailed his season right off the bat. So I'm, I'm not necessarily going to hold the sophomore season against him, but let's talk about his strengths. Please tell me all of the things that you love about AD Mitchell. Yeah. I mean, elite size, body control and athleticism. I mean, we mentioned this with Brian Thomas on yesterday's show. Uh, go check that out if you, if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, but there's just not many guys that move this way. And I love how he can contort his body and he can twist in the air. He can make catches above his head. He just moves differently than most receivers that size. Uh, he's also a better route runner than I think you would expect for somebody that's six foot three and 210 pounds. Like he can get in and out of his breaks really, really well. Uh, I don't think Texas, Texas always used him that way, but if you want to run some slants and some digs and some comebacks, like he, he can run a full route tree. I think that's the biggest difference between him and Brian Thomas is he's just such a better route runner. Now, the negatives for A.D. Mitchell is I wish he played bigger than maybe he does. There, there's too many times, and you can watch the Alabama game, where he kind of lets guys like go through his back and knock away passes. Like, you're big, A.D. Mitchell. Go be go be a big receiver. Be physical. He's not – he really, really needs to work on the play strength. But my biggest concern, and this is the one that I kind of can't get over – is you're just getting nothing from him after the catch. And this is why we're going to, I'm going to talk about this at the end of the show. He reminds me a lot of George Pickens early on in his Georgia career. And then early on in his Pittsburgh career, where it's highlight catches and then basically nothing. Um, I, I just don't know how valuable he is going to be after the catch. He averaged 3.2 yards after the catch per reception this year. That was tied for 448th in the country among receivers. Like, nothing after the catch. I mean, that's, that's nothing. Uh, yeah, that that's in a really tough spot to be. So it's not just a matter of getting the ball in AD Mitchell's hands because, you know, a, a guy like Rashi Rice, for example, you knew that once you found a way to get the ball into his hands, he was going to do something with it. That's not the case here with AD Mitchell, but if he does, improve on the, the play strength. You know, he has the athleticism. He definitely doesn't like, he, he's not as tough as, as you would think. That was a, a big gripe of mine coming out with uh, Quentin Johnston drafted to the chargers. Like he's got this awesome frame, um, you know, didn't obviously test as well as, as AD Mitchell did, but still tested very well in comparison to what you would expect for his size. But a 
didn't necessarily translate to the tape, like isn't overly dominant uh, when you're looking at some of these one-on-one -on -one matchups. So I think all of those are really valid concerns. My biggest concern, and, and we've already mentioned it a couple of times, just comes back to the disappearances. I mean, I can picture fantasy managers here, uh, let's say six months from now, uh, tweeting, you know, a meme of the milk carton with a picture of A.D. Mitchell's face on it. And then the next week, he's probably going to win you a week with, you know, a, a hundred receiving yard game and, and a touchdown. So I think that what you can probably project for A.D. Mitchell based on what we've seen is some inconsistencies, but a lot of a lot of high points and a lot of low points, which are going to be hard to navigate specifically for fantasy football managers. All right, let's dive more into the numbers because, again, they are really, really fascinating. Uh, the further that you dig in A.D. Mitchell, we will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament, whether you're betting in a big upset or a number one seed. It's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even go pick who's going to win the entire tournament. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. I Listen, if you're watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day, why don't you consider making the switch to Locked On Sports today? A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories with all, without all that unnecessary screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Kate, let's dive into the advanced numbers, courtesy of PFF. What do you got? Uh, again, a, a lot to like, but still some confusing points. 95th percentile in terms of receiving grade, but you have a lot of low points for as much as I mentioned that high point, uh, 73rd percentile in terms of separation percentage, 20th percentile yards per route run, 25th percentile in casting contested catch percentage, which again, you're not going to necessarily like you're, you're might be a little bit surprised by that based on his size. You'd think he'd be able to get a, a little bit more of an edge over cornerbacks, but that's where this play strength comes in 25th percentile in terms of contested catch percentage, third percentile in yards after the catch perception. And it is also worth noting the catchable target percentage, which catchable target rate ranked in the 14th percentile. So you, you kind of understand the gripe with Quinn Ewers, but um, you know, I, it's all over the map. I know. <laughs> I know that's, that's the hard part here is like, man, the physical tools are so great. The separation like is really good for being a big receiver in the overall PFF grade is very, very good. But how valuable is a big receiver that doesn't make plays after the catch and is in the bottom fourth percentile or you know, the bottom quarter percentile in contested catch stuff? Like I, I just don't know. And that's why I'm going to keep mentioning his name. George Pickens had a lot of the same issues coming out of Georgia, not overly productive, right? Not somebody who ever had a thousand yard season uh, during his time in college, never offered you anything after the catch. So it's very much a question mark as to what his dynasty value is. And my concern with A.D. Mitchell is that I just don't know, like week to week, game to game, how much you're going to be able to trust him. He's going to be a guy that I can promise you I will be rostering in best ball. He is a guy that I will be rostering in best ball dynasty leagues. But I do have concerns week to week. Now, in terms of traits, so like here's here's the thing that kind of separates A.D. Mitchell from these top tier wide receivers. He's got a lot of the traits that you would look for in a top tier wide receiver. But the issue is he's coming out of a draft class that has both the level of refinement and the traits. So he's at a significant disadvantage there. But I mean, if you are a team that already has an established wide receiver one, 
who can develop a, a wide receiver at the next level and you're confident in those skills, I think A.D. Mitchell could be a great complement to your roster, but I do not think he's ready to be a true wide receiver one. I think you see it on tape. I think you see it in terms of his analytical profile, a lot of those inconsistencies. But, you know, for these size speed mismatches, it, it's it, it's also really hard to get over the yards after the catch because you want these, these you know, like big, big, fast guys to be able to, to get yards after the catch. Like it, you just need to have that level of dynamicism. And we have talked before about like quarterback prospects, uh, you know, obviously a big part of getting yards after the catch is having optimal ball placement. So maybe Quinn Ewers didn't exactly help matters there in terms of producing yards after the catch, but generally speaking, that's not going to be, that's not going to be his. Okay, I want to just give you a couple more stats on A.D. Mitchell before we move on. And again, the I'm not trying to ter tear down the prospect, but these are some of my concerns. So I mentioned 3.2 yards after the catch per reception, tied for 448th in the country. Missed tackles for six, tied for 263rd in the country. Uh, deep catches, eight, that's tied for 88th in the country. Deep yards, 302, tied for 95th in the country. Slot catches, 300 or fifth, five slot catches tied for 374th in the country. Four contested catch, uh, catches this season tied for 311th. Like, there's just a lot, a lot of his game where I wish he was better, and there's just not enough where he, he stands out in an elite way. He's not overly dominant in any facet of these areas of strength. And I think that's the biggest issue here with AD Mitchell could be a really exciting complimentary wide receiver, but just really hard to imagine him having a focal point role. He's not going to be ready for the role of a focal point role in any sort of offense anytime soon. That's not to say he doesn't have the physical tools and, and traits to potentially get there someday, but he's definitely not somebody that I think we're going to envision here with a top end role anytime no. soon. All right, let's talk about comps value and potential landing spots next. Welcome back to the lockdown dynasty football podcast. Every day is on Monday show. We're going to continue with our wide receiver prospect profiles discussing Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell's teammate at Texas, so make sure you guys tune in for that. Uh, but let's break down his dynasty value, Kate. Where is he being drafted and ranked among his peers? Marcus, his dynasty value is kind of all over the place, depending on where you're looking. Here, I'm going to refer to consensus rookie rankings over on Fantasy Pros, um, you know, with with top experts, just taking the, the sum of those masses here. Right now, currently being drafted 15th overall as the wide receiver eight in this rookie class here, um, which I think is, is really weird because we've mentioned tier break. After these top end receivers, there are a lot of question marks, right? Like there's a lot of refinement in your Marvin Harrison Jr., your Malik Neighbors, your Roma Dunze. After that, I'm going to be honest, like there's kind of this tier break and then there's a lot of variation depending on where you're looking at these dynasty rankings. But um, in super flex, you know, obviously that value is pushed down a bit more um, going as uh, still the wide receiver eight. Uh, but, you know, I'm I'm having trouble buying into him at this point. And. You know, there's a lot of talent uh, in, you know, notably like it, we're we're going to talk about Xavier Worthy here on our next episode. You know, I'm going to take Xavier Worthy over him. I'm going to take Brian Thomas over mm. him. I'm going to take uh, Lad McConkey over him. I what are your thoughts on this value? Because I'm I'm even hesitating at buying in at like wide receiver eight. And I'm honestly kind of surprised at myself because I thought I was going to be all in and it turns out I am, I am not. I'm buying. 
at wide receiver eight. I'm buying at wide receiver seven. I'm buying at wide receiver six. So I'm You're actually buying it on the traits. Right? I am. Like I am buying in on the traits. Uh, there are just not many guys that are this talented. Uh, and usually these guys eventually figure it out. Now, one of the things I do like about AD Mitchell is it seems like his draft value is going up. So I won't be surprised if he gets first round draft capital. And that leads me to my next point about potential landing spots. We went over this with Brian Thomas. I think Brian Thomas goes somewhere between picks 14 to 24. I don't think Mitchell's going to go as high. However, I think his range kind of starts at like, like 17. But what I'm really interested in is like the next group of teams. Like, could he go to Buffalo and be the replacement for Gabe Davis? I think that's possible. Could he go to Baltimore and they pair Zay Flowers and A.D. Mitchell together? I think that makes a lot of sense. I think the Chiefs at 32, if you're looking for somebody that can be on the outside, that can kind of replace Marcus Valdez scaling, um, I, I think that makes a lot of sense as well. So I think the landing spot here is going to be really critical. Um, last thing I wanted to ask you before we head out, did you have a, uh, a comp for him? I don't, I'm, I'm just, I'm not good at comps, but I, I think the one name, and we actually talked about this guy, uh, I think on our last episode, but DJ Chark is a guy that I think comps in terms of like size, uh, you know, we, we have a little bit more weight on AD Mitchell, but in terms of the side sort of speed, comparison and Marcus if that is a comp that does translate to the NFL I think fantasy managers probably know what they're going to get a guy that when he's on the field a tremendous asset to the team that drafts him but not necessarily an every down player that you can you know put in your fantasy lineups in perpetuity so I think he's similar for me he's more athletic than this player, but I think his role is going to be very similar to like Drake London uh, with the Falcons because London coming out of USC was a really good route runner. Um, he had a big catch radius, but not super dynamic after the catch basically didn't give you a lot there, but can get open underneath and can make plays in the red zone. I, I think London is a better prospect to be clear, but I think he could potentially fill that X receiver role for the right team. I think London, far and away, a much better prospect than A.D. Mitchell coming out, I think offers a lot more consistency than we're probably going to get out of A.D. Mitchell, at least as a prospect and at least as he projects immediately here in the NFL. But, Marcus, what I'm kind of interested in, so I've mentioned I'm a little hesitant at buying in at that value right now because I do think there are a lot of other receivers. I mentioned Lad McConkey as one that – their skills might translate a little bit more quickly to the NFL and you yes. might require yeah. a little bit more of a, a less of a ramp up period. I think that AD Mitchell might be a great like post hype sleeper after his rookie season. Yes. Uh, you know, similar to, you know, folks that maybe are buying, I don't know that there are all that many people buying Quentin Johnston right now, but like I could picture him having that first round draft capital coming in, not having a huge role right off the bat dynasty managers kind of getting reactionary to that ad mitchell is a guy that i could picture having like a true third year breakout a la a nico collins versus a guy that steps on the field year one even despite the you know i i that's well, how hey, i'm picturing really this. quickly nico collins not a bad comp yeah AD mitchell. Okay. i kind of I like it a little bit actually that's a that's a pretty good one now <laughs> i'm gonna have to think about that one a little maybe bit a little bit you know ad mitchell better athlete but like Still has like some of the size. I think Nico Collins, you know, plays a little bit more physical, but like not bad though. A lot of similar tools. I could picture him having a Nico Collins esque trajectory where sure. you're going to be able sure. to buy him after year one, after year two for a super discount uh, compared to where you're going to get him as a rookie. All right, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Locked On Dynasty your first listen every single day. Go check out the show on YouTube. We post videos every single day over there. Go download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Monjuke. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier. We will see you right back here on Monday to discuss Texas wide receiver Xavier Worthy.